Hello. I thought today I would talk about synchronicity, which is a bit different from my last one, which was property prices. But, well, it's a, it's a complicated universe. There's lots of stuff going on. So I thought I'd talk about strange coincidences that maybe we can use to our advantage that, that some people use as their guidance system through life because it, it allows their intuitive brain to provide some means of communicating with their rational mind. So the idea of synchronicity is that strange coincidences happen and the point about them is they're meaningful to you. Um, you might be thinking about somebody and they phone up. Now obviously, mathematically speaking, that's bound to happen by sheer coincidence quite often actually. Um, and indeed it does. And in terms of just randomness, that's completely understandable. But it's meaningful to you because it happened to happen when you were thinking about them and it might trigger some ideas in your head that you wouldn't have had previously. So it can have an influence on you and that may be good or bad, that's up to you. <clears throat> or maybe it's not even up to you, it's up to the universe. Um, but your reaction may be nothing, you may dismiss it as coincidence, you may laugh at it, say, oh, isn't that interesting? Or it may trigger some more thorough action from you in, in some project or something. The intuitive type of person will take these things semi-seriously. I mean, I think you still have to keep your rational brain working, <coughs> um, but it doesn't hurt to be made aware of, if you like, what's going on in your own unconscious mind, uh, what biases you might have. I'm going to talk a bit about some more synchronicities, <coughs> and you can see what I mean, uh, just, just from examples. Supposing Oh, supposing you're thinking about buying a car and you choose a particular model that you might like and you will find, not surprisingly, when you're walking around the streets at random you will keep noticing cars of that model whereas perhaps previously you'd never even known they existed almost. Um, obviously you're subconscious mind knows that you are interested in this sort of thing now, or basically your interest in this sort of thing now causes it your brain to sort of pop up. Oh, look, there's one. Is that it? Whenever you're, you're out and about. Um, we naturally focus on what we're interested in. The key thing is that we naturally focus not only in what we're interested in consciously, but also in what we're interested in unconsciously. And it can give us clues. For example, supposing you're not getting on very well with your mother or something at the moment, okay? Some family problem or maybe she's just too interfering or and you're, you're thinking about these things. And you might be out and about and you see a poster of showing a, showing a tiger, maybe the movie The Life of Pi or something is on. Or you might find a spider in the bath or something like that. Now, you might think nothing of those things. But if you're aware of dream symbolism, um, you may be aware that tigers and spiders can be bad mother symbols in dreams for some people some of the time. Um, so that would alert you that this issue is <coughs> perhaps running deeper than you might realise. Um, and in fact there's more influence going on than in your brain than you're, you're definitely aware of consciously. That you maybe need to think about these things more uh, and remove some of that influence. Um, or whatever action you think is appropriate. Um, <clears throat> different people symbolise things in different ways um, in their dreams. Um, there seem to be some common features. 
Um, I'm afraid most books on dream symbolism are kind of rubbish. They're based on fortune telling, you know, you're going to meet a tall, dark stranger sort of idiocy. Really, that's not the sort of thing. If you're going to look for some book that talks about dream symbolism, then go for one that is based on some sort of psychology. In other words, fact, evidence. I like Jungian books myself. There was one a few years ago, Dictionary for Dreamers by Tom Chetwind, but I haven't been able to find it. I think it's out of print. Um, but if you see a copy, that's pretty good. But anyway, I'll stick a link to something uh, and um, below the video, maybe. Um, if not a dictionary, then a book on how to interpret dreams, just if you're interested. Um, I might even do a, a vlog about that subject one day. Not soon, I think. Another way of using synchronicity is to <clears throat> maybe you're looking maybe you're looking for something to read and you want something which is maybe going to be helpful and you don't know what that might be, but you might go into a bookshop or browse online and you could go to the book section about of, of things that you're generally interested in and just without really looking pick out a title with your left hand is the superstitious way to do it because your intuitive brain is supposedly connected to that hand. I don't know if it makes any difference, but you might want to do it, go the whole hog and do it the official way. And whatever that book is, read it, take it, buy it, if you're in a bookshop, um, read it, see if it's helpful. You could also go to sections which are sections that you are not normally drawn to, because um, getting info from beyond your comfort zone is good to generally just from common sense actually um, all of these things have a rational explanation and a, an irrational one and as humans are semi-rational creatures um, either might be right at a given time or more useful to you this kind of thing is in us because it's useful I think um, how it works, why it works, those are separate questions. That it works is demonstrable. You can demonstrate it for yourself. Um, probably it works better for some people than others, and again, that's a chance thing. Stanley Kubrick, the film director, used to get books and magazines on this basis. He'd just pick something up at random and read it. And he said um, in an interview I... I read about that um, very often he would find something quite relevant to what he was working on at the moment like that and I've found the same actually um, it's very often that that happens <clears throat> but then there's a lot of material in a book so there's a lot of possible connection points with whatever you're up to Um, there is also um, a potential mechanism which goes beyond mere chance. Um, I don't like articles that talk about quantum mechanics and stuff in a superstitious way. There's lots of them online. Um, I dismiss them. Fritjof Capra and I don't know whoever they are. I'm, I'm suspicious of all this nonsense. I have a physics degree. So I've studied it properly. Um, but there is one result in quantum mechanics which is interesting in this respect, which is we know that quantum mechanics means that things are a bit fuzzy at the subnuclear level, and space and time are a bit fuzzy, and there are experiments where you can apparently influence the behaviour of a photon going way back in time. Like you can look at... Um, light which is coming being lensed by a galaxy and it's coming around a photon will come either this side of the galaxy or that side of the galaxy and reach your telescope and if you're looking at both then the photons arrive at random one side or the other but if you're looking at one side only you find they all come that way which is peculiar because they left that 
sector of space billions of years ago. So how do they know where your telescope is going to be pointing? And yet they do that. right? So it's like you've influenced back in time. And quantum mechanics, like it allows things to be fuzzy in space, it allows things to be fuzzy in time, and there are mathematical. there is a mathematical result. I'll try and find the link. Um, I don't know if I'll succeed, but I'll have a go. Um, which says that the future can, in fact, influence the past. Furthermore, it will always look like chance. You can't distinguish it from chance, but there is an influence, potentially. So this is a way for synchronicity to be slightly more than we can measure, but still a real effect. Um, it's bizarre, but the universe is bizarre. Um, what else? Have I got some notes? Yeah, this bit about reason and fluffy-brained New Ageism, um, they both ways of thinking are have their place. But you need to, I think, use your rational brain to verify the truth of things. Uh, um, you need to look at evidence. Um, because there's, there's a lot of people online talking rubbish, as I've mentioned. And if it's just talk, well, listen to it by all means, but take it with a strong pinch of salt, especially if it's too good to be true, as a lot of it is, of course. Or if they're invoking superpowers, um, magical thinking is, is not where it's at. I think if the human race is being led anywhere by history and whatever else may be leading us, um, it's towards more rationality and less superstition. But these strange effects are real. Maybe chance, maybe a little bit of other influences from somewhere, uh, which can't be ruled out. Um, but minimum, at a minimum, we can use them. Just don't get carried away with it all. Um, your intuitive brain can allow whatever it is to give you some guidance from time to time, even if it's just about your own subconscious messing about on, out of your general awareness. Um, but it, try it, and you'll I think you'll find it will be pretty helpful. Sometimes it's certainly bizarre. Um, I don't know if there's anything more to say about that. You might have some questions. You can leave them below um, in the comments sections, maybe. Um, I don't know. Well, bye for now. Oh, one more thing. I might just link to my intuition page on my website um, and my dream interpretations pages. So if you're interested, you could have a look. Um, they probably need a bit of a rewrite. Some of them are a bit old, but um, well, there they are. Bye.